Rolling around at the speed of sound, Sonic the Hedgehog has a theme, and that's all I remember. Hi, welcome to the podcast. I'm Second Soundwave. That was the most cancerous thing I've heard all night. <laughs> oh boy, all we right. are just getting started. Oh dear God. Well, there's a lot of funny things that I do want to mention when it comes to that movie. Um, yes, but- this is the, by the way, in case you haven't figured it out yet, this is the Sonic the Hedgehog episode of the Crowcast. This is also about the fifth episode we've recorded, but as of to date, we have only had two episodes actually released to the public yet. Mm-hmm. Oh, three. Uh, we're going to count episode zero. I am counting episode zero. Episode two was yeah. the one with the uh, the Gumpla News episode that still hasn't been edited because you don't have the, the audio for it. Wait, so uh, did we call the other one two, or are we going to call that one three? The... Hold on, so... So I thought we was going to call the previous one, episode two, and then the one that did not appear was going to be called the lost episode. Yes, but as of currently, as we're recording this, the previous episode, the one that's probably, hopefully, going to be released before this is released, at the time we're recording this, a week after we recorded that, it still isn't up in public yet. It will. It will be, but at the moment we're recording this, it isn't. So we're recording here the fifth episode in a world in which we have only published published two episodes of our podcast. Th- th- see, those are facts, but the public didn't have to know that. Oh, the public's going to learn a whole lot of things. For example, mm. they're going to learn right now that I am using my brand new Blue Yeti microphone that I bought before I went to go see Sonic the Hedgehog, and I've been using this this whole time, and Crow hasn't noticed a thing. No, I noticed the sound was a little better. I just... I figure that you you put your mouth closer to the mic or something. I don't know. No, I just got an actual microphone that isn't garbage. Oh, okay. Because I remember last time you bought a new mic and the the sound sounded weird. Like not it sounded crisp, but your voice sounded super weird. My voice was, was like, well, going I'm- in and out because I wasn't I wasn't um, I wasn't doing the audio right in Premiere. That had nothing to do with the oh. microphone. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Also, I'm kind of I'm kind of retroactively mad that I bought that microphone now because this was only ten dollars more and sounds so much better that it's not even comparable. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, well, before we get into the the movie segment, we do need to mention uh, our good Lord and Savior NewTypeHQ.com uh, coming in with a clutch and uh, praising us and blessing us with their presence. Um, so yeah, they got some super sales always going on on the weekends. Uh, if you missed this past weekend, uh, don't worry. Another weekend's going to be coming around the corner. And you can use that promo code CROSAMA or CHANNEL2S so that we can get 10% off. Unfortunately, you can't stack it with the weekend sales, but you can stack it with uh, whatever you're planning to buy. And I do believe we put the cart before the horse just a little bit there because, good sir, I don't believe you ever actually introduced yourself. Oh, some legends need no introduction, but I'll introduce myself anyways. Uh, my name is the Crow Sama. Um, I'm, I'm hoping you know who I am. Just you're on my channel, so <laughs> it's like look down. God damn it! This is the but shonen yes. anime of podcast Crow. We need a recap episode every five minutes. That is true. I want. Oh man, did oh man. I wish we had that uh, Dragon Ball Z dude. He can announce us. Like on the last podcast episode, Crow says something about banging Nobel Gundam, and two ass. Ah, uh, yes, I remember that shame. now. <laughs> uh, that was a that was an episode, but uh, no, mm-hmm. this episode, um, our main topic of discussion is going to be the Sonic the Hedgehog movie because that's a movie that came out and didn't suck, and we yeah, both saw uh, it. So let's talk about that. Uh, I mean, first off, they're about 20 years late-ish, you know, they, I mean, the the late 90s could have been okay, but yeah, they, they're just so late with this damn movie, but uh, it probably would have sucked if they would have released it back then, so I guess I give them a pass. Yeah, I don't want to think about how bad a 90s Sonic movie would be. I'm just thinking like the Mario Bros. movie, but with like furries. Yeah, true, yeah. <laughs> just just like have you ever watched that uh that tv show wilford um with uh, elijah i can't Wood? say that i have no 
Oh, uh, it's Elijah Wood has a dog, but in his mind, he sees his dog as like this middle aged man who's an alcoholic and a druggie, but he's like dressed up in a dog outfit. And that's that's what the Sonic movie would have been like. Just always, a dude wearing a Sonic, like, cheap Halloween costume. How do you always find just the weirdest shit to reference, dude? Hold on. Hold on. I, I'm, I'm going to pull it up, because this, this TV show was my life for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Send me the link. I got to see this. Yeah. Oh, this is, yeah, this is the perfect one. Hopefully, I'm not the only person that's, you know, who, the, one of the people who's listening that knows about this show. Because it's, uh, it's going to make me super depressed. I feel like I might recognize this once I actually see it with my own eyes. Uh, I hate I hate using my damn laptop for things. It makes life much more difficult. Wait, maybe I can drag and drop it. Yeah, I can drag and drop it. There we go. So, that, but blue. I feel like I've seen this before. I think I almost definitely have. Yeah, this, I know this show came out like either late 2000s. I, I think it was definitely late 2000s. If not, then it was early 2010s. But it was it was a British show first, and then they ported it to the U.S. Like, like they always do. I was about to say, it looks very British. Mm-hmm. But Elijah Wood was in the American one, and he does a great job. Oh, so it's one of those things like The Office where they completely remade it for the U.S. Yeah. Gotcha. But, so I guess we could just kind of talk from the beginning of this movie uh, all the way, you know, not not trying to jump any scenes. Um, sure. But in the beginning... So- so right off the bat, I just want to say kind of a counterpoint to what you were saying about this not being the right time for a Sonic movie. I think this mm-hmm. was I think this is a good time for the Sonic movie because we're in an era where we're kind of finally starting to get over the era of bad movies that are adaptations of things that aren't movies. Like we're re- pretty regularly getting good comic book movies. We've gotten a couple of good video game movies with Sonic being mm-hmm. one of the early ones. We're kind of in that era now where we're actually able to get these pretty respectably good movies based out of properties you wouldn't normally think you could get a movie out of. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because I guess like back in the 2000s, video games still were looked down upon and kind of weren't really considered an art. Um, I mean, there really wasn't like tournaments that were as large scale as uh, esports. So, yeah, I guess I guess with gaming yeah. becoming. Gaming didn't really become a thing until, like, I would say, like, early 2010s, like, 2013, 2014-ish. Yeah, that's true. Because I think, like, even for Pokemon, they didn't have uh, actual world championships until 2013 or 2014. For the card game? No, 2012. No, for the video games. Oh, yeah, I didn't even realize there were tournaments for the video games until recently. Mm Mm-hmm. I could be wrong. Someone's gonna correct me and say it was 2010, but yeah, I'm 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 kind of comfortable with 2011. Well, I feel like it would be kind of difficult to set up those kind of tournaments with some of the older Pokemon games. Yeah, I mean they had like Japanese only tournaments that were kind of still large scale, uh, but the World Championships didn't happen until uh, uh, I think Black Two, White Two. Yeah, that that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. those games had a lot more connectivity to them. They had the whole double battle gimmick, which, as far as I understand, is kind of important to the general structure of the tournaments. And it was, mm-hmm. you know, some of the I would say some of the earliest Pokemon games that were actually like visually impressive enough that you could watch them at a tournament and be moderately entertained. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, imagine like watching a Pokemon tournament, but it's like red and blue. I mean, that's not really the most interesting thing to watch or comfortable <laughs> hey, thing back to watch, in the, really. Back in the day, that would be some hype. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've seen that now. Which set of 12 pixels is going to win this match? Mm-hmm. Now, if you was able to, like, battle online, um, well, I mean, you could battle on Showdown. But, yeah. Yeah, there was that... I can't remember what it was called, but there was, like, that N64 game that was, like, just the Pokemon battles. Yeah, Stadium. Yeah, stadium. That would have been that would be cool for like a tournament thing. Mm. 
I, I know they had tournaments. I just I don't know if it was world or if it was just like local tournaments. Uh, but they had it for Battle Revolution, which was fourth gen. Um, I mean, I, I could I could be wrong with all my my uh, assumptions right now, but yeah, ba- Battle um, Revolution for the Wii was like really big. Battle Revolution was pretty cool too. That kind of reminded mm-hmm. me a lot of Stadium. In fact, they're basically oh, yeah. kind of the same thing, pretty much. Just yeah, <clears throat> it was just, just like a, a newer successor. version of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I gotta say, what really surprised me um, as being a really fun like Pokemon spinoff game was the uh, the Pokemon tournament game on the Switch. Oh yeah, the yeah, one I that's like just a traditional numbers. fighting game but with Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Yep, and that, I know that one still does uh, World Championships. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. That was a because like I'm, I'm I'm weird with fighting games. I like them mm-hmm. at a conceptual level, but I hate how, like, unnecessarily complex and technical a lot of them are. Mm-hmm. So while I enjoy fighting games as a genre, there's, like, a single-digit list of them that I don't, like, that I actually, like, genuinely enjoy to play. And I would say Tekken is, or not Tekken, but uh, Pokémon is definitely on there, just because it is, you know, pretty straightforward. Like, it's not, like, super stupid, crazy complex. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of uh, fighting games, do you ever think that we can uh, possibly be led into a Smash Brothers movie or like a Smash Brothers universe? Like um, like an MCU, but with Smash Bros. Mm-hmm. We got like a we Mario have, uh, movie, Pokemon. a Zelda movie. Well, they already are talking about the Netflix uh, Zelda that uh, that's been talked about forever. Oh yeah, um, I heard. I feel like I heard about that like five years ago. Mm-hmm. And then the Mario CG movie is still in the works. That could be good. I feel yeah. like that has potential. I think that one's coming out next year, actually. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, we got Mario, Pokemon, Sonic, uh, potential Legend of Zelda. I mean... I'm not getting excited till we get an Animal Crossing movie. Oh, that would be fantastic. The whole movie would just be in subtitles and it wins the Oscars. No, what if they did no subtitles, like just completely silent, and you have to understand the story and the characters' emotions just through their actions? That would be super ambitious. I don't, I that don't... would be that would be art. Mm-hmm. I mean, they did that with the minions, basically, right? Yeah, but that wasn't art. <laughs> it's like that was chaos. I bring up art, and you throw minions into the mix, Crow. What is wrong well, with you? Well, I was just mentioning the theme. Yes, I understand your point, but I was thinking, like... It's like, this is a wholesome podcast. <laughs> you ruined you ruined it with Minions, Crow. Let's just move on. Well, it ain't my fault they played a Minions uh, trailer right before uh, the Sonic movie, and I'm like, god damn it. Can't, can't escape from it. A trailer trailer for Minions what? The, uh, the Rise of Grook or something like that, whatever the dude's name is. <laughs> the Rise of Grook. <laughs> Is that what he is? His name's Grook? His, <laughs> his name's Gru. G-R-U. Close enough. <laughs> I guess, but I didn't know there was another Minions movie, no. Because the trailers they showed when I watched it was that stupid Trolls movie with, like, the music. Mm-hmm. And... Wait, a music Trolls? I got, I got, I got the Trolls that did the dude's a wizard. Trolls? No. Trolls, the this, this stupid animated movie about, like, the troll dolls. Oh, what the hell? I didn't get that one. Well, yeah, that was... Pain- that trailer was honestly so painful that I don't even remember what other trailers were shown before the movie, but there were a couple others. Mm-hmm. I definitely remember there being... Uh, there was... Was it just trolls? Maybe it was just trolls. I don't know. Um, but, yeah. Oh, I do... I had, like, 20 damn trailers before my movie started. Like, I think it was, like... Because normally you, you, you're, you like, oh, 15 minutes for trailers right before a movie. No, this was, like, almost a half an hour of trailers. And I was, like, I would already just leave. I was, like, I'm done. The I whole whole the theater thing... sold all their trailer ad space to Chevy. Oh, okay. There were, like, 15 no, Chevy get... commercials and then one actual movie trailer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But... At least the, um, so the opening of Sonic, where they have, like, the Sega, and they show all the different games. Yes. That was, that was pretty damn cool, because I'm, like, I I'm looking at it. I saw all these different games. 
Mm-hmm. And now, granted, I'm not a big Sega guy, so the only thing I recognized that wasn't Sonic was Yakuza. But it was still pretty yeah. cool to see like all those retro games that haven't been acknowledged for like decades in a in like a main screen movie title screen. Mm-hmm. And my whole mind was going like, oh wait, are, are these little uh, movies or are these um, you no know, games going to be turned into movies? I'm like, god damn it, that'd be pretty damn cool. I'd watch a Yakuza movie. I'm surprised there isn't a Yakuza movie. That's, I mean, that's like a. An easy You'd one think, for one. right? There'd be like a ja- like even if it was like just a Japanese-made thing. Mm-hmm. But um, f- another fun thing that I picked up on um, about that that whole Sega opening thing there was that apparently the the voice actor for Sonic actually recorded himself doing the little Sega thing, yeah, and they like I layered see. it a bunch of times, and they didn't mm-hmm. end up using it in the actual movie, but he did record that for it. Yeah, that's that's pretty trash that they did, they uh, they couldn't do that. Yeah, that would have been so cool. Like, they kind of, like, acknowledged it with, like, the musical sting they played during the logo kind of had, like, that same melody, but it wasn't the mm-hmm. same. Yeah. It was so still good, man. So, regarding that opening scene, let's talk about how great that, like, Green Hill Zones looked in that opening oh, yeah. scene, where it was, like, the actual it- zone from the game. Mm-hmm. It, it, it was pretty much a one-for-one comparison because, like, even like the bridge crumbling, um, just like the little small details, the signs, and everything. I was like, yeah, that's pretty much Green Hills. So we get to see the Echidna tribe, um, mm-hmm. and that is one of two instances in the movie where we see like kind of characters and types of characters that we'd see in the original Sonic universe. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't see like Knuckles specifically. At least I don't think we did. Um, but you see, like, the, the the tribe of Echidnas, and they're coming after Sonic. Now, the movie makes it like Sonic's super speed is some kind of superpower that only he has. Now, I'm not big on Sonic lore, but from what I've played of the games, I got the impression that hedgehogs in the Sonic universe just inherently have speed, and that's just kind mm-hmm. of a thing that they do. Hmm... Because, like, Shadow can run fast. Um, I think Silver's pretty fast, too. Like, most of the Hedgehog characters are fast. I didn't think that was necessarily Sonic's thing specifically. Yeah. Well, I, I don't... Well, yeah, he, he does kind of mention that he was born with uh, a special gift. But I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't think they kind of, like, go into the, the direction of, like, he's the only one with the gift. I think they just mean, like, he is just something that's special... In which, even if his race, you know, has it, how how big is his actual family? Like, you know, we see a bunch of Knuckles, but in the Sonic universe, is there a bunch of hedgehogs? Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's many characters in the in the universe that are hedgehogs. In fact, probably more than any other animal. Oh, um, really? Okay. There's like I can think of right off the top of my head probably like six or seven just out of like mainstream sonic stuff because like i don't go into like Uh the comics or anything but like i've played some of the games i've seen people play some of the other games i kind of generally have a grasp on like the overall universe of sonic yeah and i've always had the impression that sonic the hedgehog universe hedgehogs are just generally fast in that well sonic says he's the fastest thing alive he's not that much faster than a normal sonic hedgehog Mm-hmm. Well, so let's put it like this: this movie obviously is not like canon to any games, of course, at least not to my knowledge. So, what if this is like a Superman type storyline where you know Sonic is an orphan, obviously, because he has right. you know, a damn owl as a mother. Um, yes, but the he's owl an orphan. Thing, that's, that was kind of that was kind of an odd odd choice for them to do. I'm not really sure where they got that from. Yeah, I don't know who that owl was. Because that was I'm not, that was. It was definitely a new thing they made for the movie, but I think it was weird that they made the decision to make it look like a literal, realistic owl and not a character in the style of the other Sonic characters. Yeah, I don't know, that was kind of weird. But, I mean, since they have these rings that can, you know, go to any universe and any planet and all that... the rings are like a teleportation thing. Yeah, and and that owl had the rings first. Maybe that owl came from a different place. another, Another place, I guess, yeah. Yeah. And the same thing for Sonic. Maybe his uh, parents was from a different place, and you know, maybe the owl Possibly. went there and grabbed them, or maybe Although the parents. The, 
you see like other Sonic Universe style characters on Green Hills. Like you see, um, yeah. you see the, the Echidna tribes, tribe and-, and then. Um, Oh, by the way, spoilers for like the whole 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 movie. This podcast, just to get that out of the way. Mm. Um, but at the end of the after credit scene, you see tails coming from that presumably that universe as well. Um, yeah. Again, very much in the style of the other Sonic characters. And I just want to say, um, of course, the elephant in the room when it comes to this movie is the character design for Sonic. We all know how that went. We all know how it looked in the in the beginning and the backlash and how they changed it and stuff. Yeah. At, at times during this movie, every like fifteen minutes or so, I would just sit back and kind of, kind of soak in the scene and just mentally picture it with the old Sonic design. Mm-hmm. And some of those it scenes would have been either incredibly painful or unintentionally hilarious had they used the old Sonic design. Like yeah. any time where they're trying to play him off as being like cute or innocent looking. Like, uh. and I feel like the bigger question that nobody's asking is if that's what Sonic looked like originally, what did Tails look like? Like, was there like yeah. an old design for Tails that we've never seen that humanity will never see that just looks absolutely horrifying? Mm hmm. Yeah, or, or maybe the Tails is just like a last minute throw in. Maybe, like, it could have been, like, part of a rewrite in the script that they did after they redesigned the, the character. But I want to imagine that there's concept art somewhere out there that's never going to see the light of day because the studio knows those designs were hated by everyone of a, mm-hmm. of a Tails in that original trailer Sonic design style. Yeah. I want to believe that exists. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the old Sonic design. I'm like, oh, God it's horrible like it doesn't have the gloves the he legs has those are so creepy lanky. little tiny hedgehog hands yep his and legs like, are weirdly teeth. he's like weirdly muscular but lanky at the same time Mm-hmm. yeah i'm glad i'm glad they went the route they did yeah it felt a lot more sort of respectful the way they did it and mm-hmm. i also loved the little the little nods and stuff to other aspects of not just the universe but kind of the the real life sphere of culture around Sonic, I guess. Like they had that little Easter egg of the like the Bigfoot hunter guy drawing a picture of him and it's the classic Sonic picture. Yeah, I lo- I laughed my ass off and the I-, I was so sad the rest of the uh the theater, not many chuckles, like maybe one or two. I yeah, know, I how was, dare y'all. The friend I was watching with was also a pretty big Sonic fan and we both cracked up at that. Mm. Um, and then there was another there was a couple lines in this movie that, like... Because, like, this is... Obviously, this is a kid's movie, but there was a couple lines that had, like, you know... Like, you know, they'll always do in these kids' movies. There'll be, like, a couple lines that have, like, an adult double meaning innuendo kind of thing to them. hmm And one of them kind of just... Whatever it happened, it happened a couple times, I think. It would just completely blindside me, and i just start laughing for, like, 10, 15 seconds at what kind of was seemingly nothing. Mm-hmm. I remember there was that whole there was that whole bit with um with with Robotnik when they introduce him and he's like talking to the sergeant guy and then he says something about like Charlotte's web and Charlotte leaving an egg yeah. sack and then he turns around and gestures to his robots and he's like this is what my egg sack can create and I was just yeah, like and- <laughs> I just fucking broke down in the theater when that happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I chuckled and I was like, I kind of cringed a little bit because I'm like, is that semen? Is, it hurt. Is, is that what? Is that I was what like, it is? did they just make a cum joke in the Sonic the Hedgehog movie? And it just, mm. it felt like that. And I was, it was like, I was like that moment of, it's like, it's like a clown just slapped me in the face. It's like mm-hmm. it's funny, but it kind of hurts. But it's also funny that it hurts. And I'm like trying to think, did he mean that to be funny, or did he actually want to hurt me? Does this mm. clown want to be? Does this clown want to kill me, or is it just a really funny clown? And that yeah. shock was honestly probably more funny than the actual joke itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would say Jim Carrey definitely. Uh, he carried a lot of the movie. Oh, Jim Carrey was really fun in this. Mm-hmm. Because it's not only just hit like the character himself that he was playing, but you really felt that Jim Carrey just had a blast. 
playing this character. Oh yeah, it's and, really cool to see, like, because like he's getting on in years. Like he's not a young guy anymore. To see that mm-hmm. he like still has like that classic Jim Carrey energy. Yeah. And it was good. I mean, he played a great villain. Uh, kind of like it almost reminded me of the Riddler mixed with like Ace Ventura. I've seen that Riddler comparison done before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it was. I wouldn't. It's not the first like person I would think of to voice Robotnik, but for what it was, it it kind of it actually worked. It was a, it was a it was a, certainly a direction to take the character in that I don't think strayed too far from the source material. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, obviously, um, this is like a young period because they they make many mentions that Sonic is uh, either a kid or a teenager. Uh, in some way, so it's not adult Sonic. It's not the Sonic that's you know going on his adventures with Tails and has like the girlfriend and met Shadow. This is a very very young Sonic. So Although he is already young... he is already friends with Tails, or at the very least, Tails is aware of his existence. Yeah, I, and we don't know what that whole scenario means. Like, is Tails going to find him because you know because I guess maybe they met when they were like like. Back in the, the beginning of the movie, like when they were young, young Green kids. Hill, yeah. Yeah, but we don't, I mean, we don't know. But it's interesting to know, like, you know, the origin. Uh, well, not necessarily origin, but to know the first interactions of Sonic and Mr. Robotnik. Because this, sure effectively, had a this is an origin story. Like, I wasn't yeah. really thinking about it that way until you brought it up. But yeah, this is, this is an origin story for Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm-hmm. He's younger. Robotnik doesn't really get his classic robotnik look until the very end of the movie Mm -hmm. um we haven't seen really any of the the classic sonic characters outside of sonic himself and some very brief appearances by a couple others um this is definitely set up and to be honest i'll watch sonic 2 oh yeah absolutely in fact i'm gonna be very disappointed if they don't make sonic 2 seeing as how much uh how much like teasing and stuff they did for it at the end with the after credits stuff yeah they were really banking on uh on this doing good with that tease, because I mean, movies in the past have made teases and has never made a sequel. Yeah, Godzilla and to be honest, being one of the biggest ones. This, I think, it's probably really, really likely it's going to get a se- sequel because mm-hmm. this is now. This movie has had the biggest opening weekend of any video game movie ever. Mm-hmm. This one, it it recently outperformed Detective Pikachu. So yeah. it's 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 setting the bar higher than it's been before, and given the kind of stuff that gets sequels nowadays, I don't even think it's a question that we're going to be seeing a Sonic two. Yeah, and, and we're already confirmed with a, a Detective Pikachu two movie, so it's like they're going to make another Sonic movie. Oh, certainly, and I am definitely looking forward to it, provided that it follows up on what was teased in the first movie. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, but I mean, when you watch the interviews, you know, I, I know you watch the um, the interviews with the cast. Everyone in there, even the ones that never played the games when they were younger, like they all had a blast. Uh, you know, being in the movie. Obviously, they just had the concerns with the uh, design, but they said, you know, outside of that, they were they were loving the actual production. Uh, even the voice of Sonic, that dude was like, he was super hype about this whole. Yeah, thing. it was really cool to see how familiar he actually was with like the games. The yeah. old games, like he grew up on them, he was very familiar with that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, I love that dude. From I what I understood, dude, um, oh, good. I was just gonna say here, from what I understood from a couple interviews I saw, the whole characterization of him as like an excited kid kind of came from the voice actor's performance. Yep. Like, I, have you ever watched Parks and Recreation? I have not. No. So he's in he's in Parks and Rec. Uh, I'll send you a link to uh, one of the clips. All right. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. About after Sonic's the, voice. Yeah. So I only know this dude from Parks and Re- uh, Rec, and I've seen him in like other forms of media. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, this dude he he is hilarious in Parks and Rec because he has that like um, childish kind of demeanor, and he's always like excited and always like on the move and. Kind of like has like ADHD. <laughs> so it's or something. funny because even in the inter, I think that's just how he is as like a person. Like even in the interviews, mm-hmm. he's like that. Yeah. Let me see if I can find it. Parks and Rec. Uh, uh, let's see if I can find that. But 
It, uh, I mean, in the meantime, um, yeah, I mean, the movie from start to finish was definitely like it was a blast. Um, I, I wouldn't say it was like the most fun movie I've seen in the past year, nor was it like the best thing I've ever seen. But for something that had a lot of criticism and a lot of people had doubts, it, it was pretty much fantastic. I was pleasantly surprised. Because here was, here was, this was my experience with Sonic the Hedgehog. I saw the original trailer. I didn't have as visceral a reaction to it as a lot of other people did because, frankly, I, didn't, I at the time didn't care much about the idea of a Sonic the Hedgehog movie anyways. So I saw it. I said, yup, that looks pretty bad, and then kind of ignored it. Mm-hmm. Then I saw the redesign, and I liked it. The redesign looked good, but I thought at the time people were getting way too hyped about the movie just because they changed the character's design. And I was still really doubtful about what the actual movie itself was going to be like. I was thinking, guys, you know, chill out, calm down. It's still probably going to be like a really crappy, cringy kids movie. Don't get your hopes up. So Mm -hmm. I I went to watch it with a friend, and I was was mostly just doing it just because, like, hey, you know what? I'm probably not going to like this movie. But I like I like their approach they took to criticism, and I like that they took it into consideration instead of just muscling through and releasing their crappy movie anyways. So even if this might not be the best movie of the year or anything like that, or even like just mm-hmm. a movie I'll greatly enjoy. Period. I'm gonna I'll I'll give them I'll give them a ticket sale. I'll go see the movie, yeah. and I think it was a good movie. I don't mm-hmm. think it was great, but I think it was just a really solid, fun family film. It's not yeah. like. Pixar levels of animation mastery, but it's fun. It's not like one of those kind of like shovelware kind of Sony Pictures animations crappy kids movies. It's a it's a good movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I could see this. This is one. It's one of those kind of kids family movies. I could see holding up for like a like a decade ish or so, maybe. mm Hmm. Yeah, there was a lot of references in there that I'm like, ooh, that's that's not gonna hold up. That's not gonna. Yeah, hold up. I could see, I could see, you know, like you showing this to Hero when he's like eight or nine, and like it's still kind of holding up to an extent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 pretty much my thoughts as well. Because like, there's some kids' movies like, kids. you know, classics like, you know, I mean, obviously there's the easy targets like the Emoji movie, but there's just. A lot of like kids movies and animated movies nowadays that are so not even like offensively bad but just so not good that they just completely fly under the radar and everyone ignores them Mm -hmm. and you never ever hear them mentioned outside of like youtube reviewers who very specifically focus on those types of movies so Mm -hmm. i i was expecting this to be that kind of movie so i was definitely happy with how it turned out um i think this is a really solid entry in the general kind of theme of movies that are adaptations of things that you wouldn't you wouldn't think would work as a movie i think i think they did well Mm -hmm. yeah uh, i mean i I can't really think of how they even could have uh, improved on it i mean you could probably say maybe some of the writing could have been improved but even then it probably would have lost its charm for what here's the only thing i would have improved about it there is one thing that I absolutely hate about mainstream Hollywood movies, and that is their obsession with the real world. Every mm. movie that features anything either slightly abnormal has to be either about a character from our world being transported to some other weird and wacky world, or a character from that world being transported into our world. They can't just have a movie set in something that's not our specific universe in our current day. And that mm-hmm. really gets under my skin, and I hate it a lot. If I w- Wait, so, well, so how uh, how would you have done the Sonic if he didn't transport to our world? Exactly, I would have made him not transport to our world. The whole the like, first scene where they're in like Green Hills, I would have just had him teleport to another zone based off the game, had him meet some other actual Sonic characters, and had the movie take place within the actual Sonic universe. With that said, that- though. Out of all the movies that do that stupid bullshit where they drag a character out of a cartoon world and put them into our world, I didn't hate it in this movie as much as I usually do. Mm-hmm. 
uh, if they would have done um, where he goes into like an actual like in Sonic Universe um, place, it probably wouldn't have held up well. But you also got to think that it, within the Sonic Universe, Earth does exist. Like yes, and there are humans. Here's the thing, though. Like in Sonic Adventure, like there's like regular humans like going about their lives as you're like running around doing Sonic stuff. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, that's the norm for that universe. It's not like. Whoa, Sonic's here. This is the first ever ti- time that some talking animal has appeared in our world. What a wild and crazy new thing. That's just the status quo for that universe. And Hollywood mm-hmm. can't seem to handle status quos in their movies that aren't the exact status quo of real life. Everything yeah. has to be about, whoa, look, it's the normal everyday family, but suddenly this blue hedgehog falls in their backyard. What a wacky scenario. They can't mm-hmm. just have a world in which things outside of the norm already exist and then tell a story in that universe they have to make it some stupid fish out of water crap i mean they have it's not frequent but they have they have they did it with they did it with detective pikachu i do i do respect them for that i think that was a that was one of my favorite things about that movie was that they actually had it set in the pokemon universe a world where Pokemon and humans already coexist, and it just, I like that. Mm -hmm. You don't see it a lot um, in Western entertainment, but I like that. Or in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yes, that kind of thing, where just the, the world just is different, and you just have to, they don't have to, like, justify their world being different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and it it could have worked like that, like if they just would have kept it Sonic, you know, universe, and, and I mean, mo- pretty much the whole thing would have been CG at that point. But um, th- they could have done it. But I, I yeah. just I I feel as if it would not have done as good as the current movie that we have. I don't know. That, I feel like it. There's there, maybe there's a middle point between there that we that that mm-hmm. could be worked towards. Um, like you were saying, there are humans in the Sonic universe. If it was maybe in the Sonic universe and there were human characters in it as well, but this wasn't, you know, our world with Sonic being there for the very first time, but instead the Sonic universe that humans also exist within, I think mm-hmm. that could have been workable. Yeah. It definitely could have. Yeah, I mean, and we do have that Sonic uh, Xbox 360 game where, um, you know, he got kissed by that, that one princess chick don't remind me (laughs) but i mean i was i think though as far as what they actually did for the movie doing that premise they did it about as well as they could i think that was pretty well done yeah yeah i I can't think of any way they uh they could have made it better so definitely kudos to them yeah, that and they was also, a respectable, they also snuck in, respectable movie. Mm, they also snuck in a lot of little Easter eggs. Um, there was the pose whenever he's... Um, it's, it's in the second half of the movie, but when he's uh, sliding around, he, I think he slides... Well, he slides under a bus, and he goes from one building to another, but in mid-air, he does a pose, which is... You can say it's his, it's his uh, iconic Sonic pose, where he like you know lists like one the, leg in the air. the early like the early two thousands promo art pose, yeah. But it, it's also his um, uh, Super Smash Brothers pose. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. And I remember mm. the um, I also saw a couple times in interviews that apparently they also there's like that scene where he's like teetering on the edge of I think it's like the building, mm-hmm. and they like yeah, and that, that's his idol. His his animation from the game when you're right on the edge of a platform and he like kind of yeah. windmills his arms. mm Hmm. Yeah, he did that. That was at the end. Yeah. Um, there was also a, uh, I think it was the Green Hills theme, but it was in like a, it was like a piano style. Yeah, like they had like a, 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 like kind of optimistic piano version of it at the end as they were cleaning up after the events of the of the climax. Yeah. Uh, what else? I know there had to been some other things that uh, I should have brought a pen and paper and wrote it down as I'm watching the movie. Um, I thought I actually seriously thought about doing that, um, but I mm-hmm. ended up just just sitting and watching the movie, and I'm glad I did because oh. I enjoyed it a lot. 
Oh, and the, the way he defeated um, Dr. Robotnik, it, it's the same way you basically defeat him in the game, uh, hitting the top of the, the, the aircraft. Hitting the top of, the, of it, yeah. And also, mm-hmm. one thing I didn't catch until that, that end credit sequence where they were, like, showing, like, the 8-bit recreate or 16-bit recreation of the movie. Yeah. Was that whole thing with, like, the car drone that was chasing them was basically, like, one of those multi-stage boss fights from the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. That was actually really well done. I liked that. I liked that whole scene and how they had like the the vehicle like constantly like breaking down into smaller and smaller and smaller drones. Mm-hmm. Oh, that it got funny whenever the the little mini, you know, helicopter. Little helicopter, I was, yeah. I was like, I was like, Jesus Christ! Like, <laughs> like can we? Stop? And then it turns into an even smaller little bomb. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. Uh, let's see what else. Um, so what do you think they did wrong with the movie? I'll tell you something that could be construed as them doing wrong, but I don't think was really as wrong as some people make it out to be. Mm-hmm. In this movie, Sonic flosses twice. Yeah. It's cringy, it's dumb, but here's the thing. Sonic is a kid. Yeah. And a kid in 2020, if they want to do a victory dance and they're excited, that is the dance they are going to do. Mm -hmm. That is, it's not, I don't like, it's like, it's not like my favorite thing that he did that, but given the character and the context, it makes sense. Yeah. So while that is something that some people could say is like, oh, that was really cringy and stupid... I get it. It works in the movie, and I think it's suited to the scene. It doesn't feel like it was forced in just to be like, hey, hey, fellow kids, we included the hip new trendy thing. It felt like a genuine inclusion of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and there's way more cringy types of um, modern-day dances that he could have did, like that whole like one leg and you kick the other leg and you rock oh, your yeah. fist back and forth. Like, Yeah, that... There's he could have dabbed. Dances, in, he so. could have dabbed in 2020. Please God no. God, I'll I'll take the floss over the dab any day. You know what? As we're talking, I'm gonna draw some high quality fan art of Sonic dabbing, and mm-hmm. then send it to you. And um, when I finish it and send it to you, uh, why don't you put it up on screen in the post edit for the good people at home watching on Will YouTube? Do. So thankfully, my copy of Windows 10 still has Microsoft Paint. So um, let's choose some blue. Mm-hmm. We got a little bit of uh, a little bit of Bob Ross painting here with Channel Two S. I'm gonna go for a I'm gonna go for a squarish canvas, and um, let me just pull up a reference photo of Sonic the Hedgehog. And you know what? I'm not gonna narrate through this whole thing. I'm just gonna kind of work on it uh, as we're talking. So uh, if you have anything you want to talk about, Crow, uh, why don't you shoot us off into a new conversation? Yeah. Um, so I am really hoping that in the uh, the Mario movie, I'm hoping the end tease of that movie is gonna have Sonic, because there's always been this rivalry between the two. And you know, it's Sonic. I mean, this movie is is like the uh, the Superman of its universe. Like it could do anything. It's it's you know, it's the pathway to open up to different avenues if they want to go the route of um a smash brothers if they want to go the route of a you know sega all-stars kind of thing if they want to go to um maybe just a uh, mario versus sonic type route because i mean you got you got these rings that can teleport to any universe yeah i'm i am kind of interested to see where they take that Mm-hmm. Yes. So I I don't know. Like I want to say they have this plan. Like they they have like the big the big enough brain. Like they got big PP and big brain to think. Okay, this can be a true franchise, and you know even just based on numbers currently. Like uh, yeah, we can make this happen. But I don't know. After their judgment on just the design, the the initial design, I'm I'm kind of like reluctant on saying that they have big brain big big pp 
I wish you could see the work of art that I'm creating as I'm creating it. <laughs> Y'all are about to be hit with a masterpiece once I show this off to the world. Is this like an original design, or are you... This is Sonic the Hedgehog dabbing. Oh, dabbing. Okay. Oh, God. That's cringe. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what else about this movie. Um, mm, yeah, I, I really just didn't have any issues. Uh, I did like that every time he got hit, he lost his coins in some way. Yeah, so that was really clever. Yeah, he got shot with the tr uh, tranquilizer it's dart. It's funny, because you know what? As, as Literally as soon as I saw him put the coins in that bag, I was like, oh, he's going to drop that bag and his coins are going to spill everywhere when he gets hurt. And that's going to mm -hmm. be like a little nod to the original game. Yep. And they and basically the... ended up doing exactly that. Yep. Uh, let's see. I should probably switch oh. to the fill tool to make this color in faster. So something I was actually pretty, you know, upset about, but I I, I totally understand why they didn't go this route because it's way too early. Sure. But when when Doctor Robotnik had the the hair, and he was in this little trailer, and it said like unlimited energy, I'm thinking, okay, he's about to make Metal Sonic. I'm like, this that's is it. exactly when he was looking. That's exactly what I thought he was doing, and I literally thought, oh, they're gonna do Metal Sonic. Mm hmm. But nope, never happened. Nope. I need to touch up okay. some of these lines here so the tool works better. So I wonder, whenever they do make the sequel, if they are going to go the route of either Metal Sonic or they're going to go with Shadow as, like, the rival or enemy. See, Shadow's iconic, but I feel like Metal Sonic would make more sense given the setup they've done. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because I know Robotnik, he's, you know, he's in his little area. He has a strand of hair with unlimited energy. Oh, wait, hold on. I accidentally committed a cardinal sin and gave Sonic blue arms. So uh, let me just fix that real quick. How dare you. That is not the right shade of brown. I need to make that way lighter. I need to see what the, what the reviews are for this movie. Because I don't think I've seen it yet. Uh... IMDB gave it a 6.9 out of 10, which I think it's a little bit low. I think it, I think it could be in the 7s. Um, well, it's a 6.9, so it's basically 7. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes has a 63%. That's pretty trash. And Metacritic has 46%. Ooh. But 96% of Google users like this movie, including me. Well, I, I think that it. says a lot, honestly. Because it really yeah, is the audience that seemed to resonate, that seemed to like this the most. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's just, like, the audience really wanted this to be good after the animators, because, uh, to my knowledge, uh, I'll have to reread um, the whole ordeal. Did the original animation studio, like, shut down? Yeah, they got shut down not long after this movie. And, unfortunately, it didn't have anything to do with the production of this movie. It was just, like, a cost-cutting thing. Yeah. But, but yeah, they're wasn't... unfortunately no more. So was it the same animators that redesigned it, or was it a different set that came in and did it? I don't know, but the animators who did the new design were the ones from the studio that shut down. Yeah, that's why I was wondering, like, if if those guys... I mean, they they can find work somewhere else. Like, I mean, granted their job is shut down, but I'm pretty sure a lot of the, the core animators and even directors, they could find work somewhere else. But... Yeah, uh, it just seems like critics just probably just super harsh on it for whatever goddamn reason. Maybe maybe a lot of them saw like the screening, and that's where their judgment went was the screening um, that maybe had the original design. Did you see the people that were mad because it was beating Birds of Prey? Oh no, I haven't seen those people yet. Oh, there were like Birds of Prey fans that were like making up shit about this movie to try and crash it because they were mad that. Birds of Prey wasn't doing as well as it. <laughs> That's so stupid. Like, I, I'm not watching Birds of Prey, not because of, like, whatever agenda people think it has, because it probably doesn't. It's probably a great movie in some uh, way. I wouldn't say great movie. It just well, doesn't look that good, honestly. Yeah, well, so let me let me backtrack. So, 
I'm not going to see it because, um, not because of any agenda or potential entertainment I can have from it. I'm not watching it because I don't care about DC. Like, I, I, I like Batman. He's kind of cool, but you can't sell me on a DC character. Unless it's like some super obscure character like Rubber Man or something. Did you, uh, did you see Shazam? Yeah, okay, so I like Shazam. Yeah, Shazam but, I, th- I thought was pretty fun. Yeah. Also, apparently I, the guy who directed it had a, has a YouTube channel, and he made, like, a bunch of videos talking about, like, the making of that movie and some of the stuff they did for it. Oh, I'll have to check that out then. Yeah. He's directed a couple other movies, too. Mm-hmm. Eh, I'll give that one a free pass, though. I'm putting the final touches on my masterpiece, and then I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> All right, final uh, pass. Um, face looks good. Eyes look good. Arms look good. Um, oh, he needs his tail. He definitely needs his tail. And now he has his tail. Okay. I'm going to say that's perfect. I'm going to save this, and you Mm -hmm. are about to see a literal masterpiece. Uh, Let me grab this off of my desktop. I present to you Sonic the Hedgehog Dabbing, an original art piece by Second Soundwave. That was that is the most hideous thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm deleting. Please be <laughs> sure you remember to serve. Please be mem- Please be sure that you remember to share this delightfully cursed image with the people at home, Crow. Make sure this gets oh, in the God. YouTube edit. I- I'll have to censor it. <laughs> Cause that nose, the the whole mouth nose, that's a penis. That's, as as like that whole section. If you turn your head to the left, that's a penis with balls, brother. <laughs> Crow, you should consider yourself <laughs> grateful that at least it's mostly flaccid. Yeah. Well, if you look at it from my point of view, if you like turn your head almost upside down and the eyes are the balls, that that's a fully erect penis, brother. The way I what see up? it, if this Sonic was to right now turn his head to face you, that nose is just flopping all over the place. Oh, God. There is he, some he serious only has soft body eye. physics on that nose. Yeah. It's like, there's only one eye. <laughs> well, Sonic only has one eye. He just he has, has two pupils Sonic. on it. Yeah. Which I'm glad they didn't go that route. That was, this is horrific. classic Sonic, and you can tell because his arms are brown instead of blue. Yeah. Ugh. That's so horrible. This This should not have been created. Yes, well, sometimes I like to not ask if I should, but if I could. Actually, yeah, you. I didn't notice that. That his uh, arms were that like tan color, not blue. I wonder why they went that route. Um, I think it's some of his newer designs have the blue arms. He had them in Sonic Boom. Oh, okay. And I feel like it could have been just a stylistic choice. Like they removed a lot of, like maybe they wanted to have him be more recognizably predominantly blue. Mm-hmm. Because I think part of the reason his arms weren't blue on the original design was purely so that you could see his arms in front of his body when you were looking at him from the side because it was a 2D game. But since this Uh, is a 3D model, it might have made more sense from an artistic standpoint to make his arms blue since they don't need to be able to make that contrast. mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, I'm not going to lie. I actually like the movie design way more than uh, any, any of the previous arts of Sonic. I think it's a good evolution of his design. Yeah. Because it's like the whole like so the original was like super chubby and like has just just rounded. It was very like chibi, '90s Japanese yeah, mascot I, character design. Yeah, I hated that one. But then the newer one from like the Sonic Adventures and all that. I like the modern I, Sonic design. I think that's a nice design. It's nice, but that when I keep looking at it, I hate the eye. I hate the uh, the color of the arms. And the proportions, I think, don't really look that great. When I think of Sonic, that's still the design that I go to, though. So, 
Mm. I mean, back in the day, yeah, but now. With that I said, actually, though, I, I like I'm the not movie. attached enough to it to be particularly attached to any individual aspect of the design. So mm -hmm. things like arm color or, you know, little tiny details like that don't really matter so much to me. But I would say as a whole, I do like the way that that design looks. Yeah. And it's also interesting, we got to look at his uh, feet uh, that were inside the uh, shoe. Ah, uh, yes. Because I was, I was worried. I'm like, oh, God, this is going to be horrendous. And in the little x-rays, I'm like, oh, it has toes, like like, like human toes. But I'm sure there's like, many Sonic fans out there that are ecstatic that we finally get to see Sonic's bare naked feet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of uh, people out there that have some nasty fetish with Sonic, and they're probably just, like, flicking their bean all night to this. Whatever you've seen only scratches the surface, dude. <laughs> More than likely. I'm, I'm not, I'm not well-versed in the, uh, the Sonic lore or fandom. So. That is the, uh, that is really the only way you should really be if you want to live a sane and fruitful life. <laughs> like, I already get enough of it with the damn Pokemon fandom. Whatever you've seen in the Pokemon fandom is just a Sunday in church compared to the Sonic fandom. Oh, I bet. But you got you got to pick and choose your battles. It's like if you go Pokemon, you're still getting the whole bestiality, nasty stuff. But if you go Sonic, I've I've heard some of the nasty stuff they do with that. Yeah, you can count me out. It's what really gets a, what really like traumatizes me is like the non sexual stuff or the stuff that doesn't seem like it would be a fetish if you didn't know that it was a fetish mm -hmm. i'm not gonna ask for any examples because i Thank don't want to hear i was there was that three second period where i was like please don't ask me to elaborate please don't ask me to elaborate please don't ask me to elaborate please don't ask mm -hmm. me to elaborate yeah don't worry i'm i'm gonna keep my browser history clean Well, now we're pretty much reaching up to an hour. Um, I guess, I mean, there... and we've mostly just talked about the Sonic movie so far, um, which was yeah. our which was our plan for this episode. We were gonna go off on tangents as needed, and I guess we kind of did from time to time. Yeah, um, I mean, we, we is there really anything did. else you want to add about the movie, Crow? Uh, not really. I mean, it was it was. I wouldn't say it was laugh out loud funny. There was uh, quite a few funny parts in it, and. It was, for the most part, very wholesome, enjoyable. You could bring your kids. Uh, my whole theater is filled with a kids. A wholesome egg sack. Yes. <laughs> with little sperm-like drones. <laughs> yes. Oh, God, I didn't even think about it that way. You're making it worse. Well, Everything and you, you say refer about to it him as his babies. I guess, but it's like... It was, it was sperm to him. Oh, and it was that... That scene where he was saying something about formula, and then like the sheriff guy said he was breastfed, and then Eggman said, "Rub it in my face, why don't you?" Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> and that like, made, like me and my friend just fucking burst out laughing because we're both like twelve on the inside. Mm. And they said they said a couple of curse words. I think they said "hell" and "damn." And like, there oh. was there was a point near the end where the sheriff guy like started to say like "son of a bitch," but he got killed. He yeah. got like knocked off the ship before he finished it. Mm hmm. It was edgy. Yeah, the ending is when it they was started edgy going. edgy for a PG. Yeah, the ending was the most of, of the edginess, I would say. I was joking with uh, my friend on the way as I was watching it that um, I wanted, I was hoping secretly that the movie would, like, like the rating for the movie was R, but the whole mm. movie all the way through is completely G-rated, except for the very climax where as Eggman and Sonic are facing off, Shadow the Hedgehog rolls in on his motorcycle, graphically kills Eggman with his handgun, drives off, and the movie continues as normal. <laughs> God. Yeah, that... Like, bad boys for life kind of ending. Well, glad I didn't go that route, because we might not have gotten a sequel. Like, well, Eggman's dead. But... 
Uh, I don't, I don't really have anything else uh, to say about the movie. It was, it yeah. Was I wholesome. feel like we've uh, we've drained the, we've drained the the, uh, the teat dry. Yeah. The one we finished eye milking finished. Sonic. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Um, I just realized I can make an addition to my drawing. Oh God. Um, let me get the file. I feel like there's a little something missing. Uh, here we go. Brush. What's my brush size like right now? I need to bring this up a little bit. No, that's too big. It's got to just be like that. No, that's too small. This is important, and the sizing and scaling must be... Never mind, it doesn't look good. I scrapped okay. the idea. The masterpiece you've already seen is the final version of my original art piece. Do not <laughs> steal. Well, hopefully, uh, I, I hope I don't see anything that comes close to that in another in iteration. I don't, I can't handle more I don't know, that. man. 2S speed painting might become a regular part of this podcast. Oh, God. <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully we don't go down a rabbit hole on... I can't crawl out of. But anything else? Anything else to add? I think we might as well leave before this uh, this relatively high note gets any lower. Oh God, yeah. I feel like we could drag this down to a zero real fast. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I guess uh, for parting stuff, uh, do want to mention the uh, thirty the thirty minute missions contest is still ongoing. Uh, over at New Type, so I'll leave a link in the comment section, not the comment section, the description, and y'all can go check that out, and make sure y'all get working on y'all builds, um, in terms of, uh, I don't know, anything else going on? I don't know. If yes, a actually, uh, my second, my second order of 30-minute mission kits for that 30-minute missions video that's still upcoming as of the time that we're making this video, and given my release schedule, is probably also going to be still upcoming by the time this video is released. Um, arrived mm -hmm. a couple days ago. <clears throat> and I okay. uh, realized that about half the items in the order were actually items from the first order that I forgot I'd already ordered. <laughs> so I now have two sets of the green armor for Alto that gives it, like, the shield and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I have two sets of the booster pieces. Nice. Alright, cool. So, uh, you're just gonna make... You're making, like, a... Uh anything crazy or is it still going to look like a 30 minute mission like? i have no i'm not making a set project i just wanted to get a sampler pack of 30 minute missions parts to both demonstrate to my audience what the line is capable of and to try out for myself to see if i enjoy the line to con enough to continue any further in it okay oh, cool you gonna plan a paint it or anything well i mean like i said there is no it I just got some pieces to mess around with. This is not a project of its own. Oh, it should be. It could be. Hmm. But no, I'm not going to be <laughs> painting this. I do have a painting project that I'd like to get to in the spring when it warms up, but it's not 30-minute mm -hmm. missions. Gotcha. Cool. All right, well, um, definitely look forward to maybe any future projects you're going to have. Um, I know for me, I don't have anything in the immediate future since I don't have paints or anything. I still have a whole month left in the States. Um, I don't like announcing things in advance because it's a great way to set the world up for disappointment. Oh, Well, you did finish the uh, red frame, didn't you? Yes, I did. Um, four months after I meant to. <laughs> hey, and mind you, this isn't never. some custom painted build. This isn't some LED job. This was just a straight build of the kit. Mm-hmm. I did not have a whole lot of motivation to build throughout the winter, um, which happens a lot. Um, winter, something about just the cold and the dark and the miserable weather just sucks all the joy out of my life and takes away my desire to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, but I did manage to struggle through the red frame. And to be fair, it's not the kit's fault. I think it's a great kit. It's just that I was, um, it was winter time and I was really not in the mood to build. Yeah. But once that I now that I have the kit together, it's pretty awesome. Um, mm -hmm. As a display piece, it's beautiful. 
Um, the sword looks awesome. I have him in this pose where he's kind of like got his hand on his katana and then he's got the other hand on the sheath like he's kind of steadying it and he's about to draw out the sword. Um, it looks amazing. Mm. Um, I have to say the, the coolest thing about this kit was when I went back to my Master Grade Red Frame and I picked it up and I looked at it and Crow, not once in my life until now have I ever picked up a Master Grade and thought, this piece of crap feels like a toy. Mm-hmm. It, the Master Grade Red Frame is an absolute child's toy compared to the Perfect Grade. There is no comparing them. Mm. So when's that review? The review has been fully shot. It has been partially Ooh. edited. And if I was a productive and ambitious individual, I would finish editing it and upload it tonight. However, I know for a fact that that's not going to happen, so more than likely <laughs> it will be going up the day after we're recording this. Okay, so yeah, um, I'll include that review into the link, because I probably won't get this particular video up until our upcoming weekend. Yeah, because remember, we still have that other, the podcast before this to upload, so. Yeah, that old one, that one's almost done. Um, it's just... Good. Today, today is like filled with every obligation for this school. So yeah, I'll yeah, you're 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 in a busy time, busy spring yeah. for you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'll have that one up, and then I'll, I'll just throw that review in the description. All right. Well, I don't, personally don't have anything. LBX February is still ongoing, and a lot of, a lot more people are jumping in on it uh, through Reddit of all places. Um, Instagram is still popping, but haven't seen any reviews on YouTube and nothing on uh, Facebook. So, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely still a lively month. Well, I would say that's a good place to wrap this up. So, mm-hmm. um, as always, I'm Second Soundwave, co-host of the Crowcast, along with Crow Sama, and I will see you next time. Take care, guys. All right, bye bye.